Hi everyone, I'm uh, Chris Johnson and welcome to another Riedel podcast. Uh, in this episode, we're going to talk a little bit on sports uh, and the technology used uh, in motorsport in particular. And I have the pleasure of uh, speaking with Brad Eyes today, who is support engineer at the Shell V-Power racing team. So hello, Brad, and thanks for joining us. Hi, Chris. Great to be here today. First of all, Brad, before we kick off, I should probably congratulate you guys on your third uh, Drivers' Championship win and your second Teams' Championship win this season. Yeah, no, it's been um, a great season. Um, the last few years have been uh, very good for us. So to come away with, with the, the third Drivers' Championship and the second Teams' Championship in a row, um, I think just commends how well we've worked as a team and um, it's just been great to get to the end of the season and, and have that success. So, Absolutely. Yeah, great achievement. So I guess for a lot of people who, who are listening to this uh, now, you know, they probably uh, only know of supercars, uh, you know, from, from what they see in glimpses on, on television or, or maybe by visiting a race every now and then. But I guess to start and to get everyone familiar, um, tell us a little bit about, about yourself and what exactly it is you, you do for the Shell VPower team. Yeah, so I'm, uh, I guess, uh, a support engineer there um, involved in, in the engineering duties. Um, I'm involved with the race strategy and analysis um, implementation of that um, and also involved in, in data systems and analysis um, so gathering data from the cars and, and what we do with that data. Um, the race strategy I've been involved with the last few years, um, which is obviously an important part when you're trying to battle for drivers and teams championships. Um, there's a lot of effort that has to go into um, figuring out as a team how you're going to try and um, be the top. So um, that's sort of my involvement. Um, I guess I got involved with motor racing um, while I was studying mechanical engineering at university. Um, I was involved at a university project there, which um, we design and build race cars. And, and many of the young engineers these days sort of come through that program, and that's how they get their start in, in motorsport. Um, after I finished my studies, I was lucky I, I went to the US for five to six years and was in IndyCar over there for for a bit of a stint um, working for various teams um, and then the last three years was luckily where I was involved with Team Penske and their IndyCar program um, and that's sort of how I got involved with, with Team Penske um, and then when they sort of got involved with supercars down here I came to Australia um, and have sort of been involved with the DJ Team Penske um, since they got involved back in the end of 2014 um, and then I've been involved in the Supercars Championship uh, since then. Amazing. So I don't know about you uh, uh, but obviously I turn on the TV and I and I watch uh, Supercars and and you know as far as I can see you you just rock up in the track uh, and the driver hops in the car uh, and off they go but something tells me it might be a little bit more complicated um, uh, than that Brad. So so for those listening, uh, tell us what, what what's involved in in getting to that final point where we all turn on our televisions and and, and see a bunch of uh, top class drivers go to race. Yeah, I, I think um, you know at, at at the top level at this level of um, sport, you know, it's it's a really complex team behind the scenes, like any professional sport. Um, you know, you've got merchandising, store staff, you've got commercial and media staff, you've got shop-based staff who are working on design and machining and fabrication assembly you know so there's a there's a big crew of people that are behind the scenes that you know maybe you don't see on the tv but they're working just as hard in what their areas are to make sure that the car is on the track and, and ready to go um, then you've got you know a crew of mechanics and engineers who travel to the events um, you know to make sure the cars are running on track and carrying out whatever work you have there. So so there's a large crew of people and, and you probably only see the drivers and maybe one or two others actually on the TV. But there, there's um, a lot of people who are behind the scenes as well, um, putting in just as much effort to 
to make sure that um, when we're on the track, we're ready to go and, and, and we look good. And so you talk about there being a big crew of people. Um, how many people are we talking? How many people are involved in, in the Shell VPOW team and, and how many of those are, are part of your, your, your trackside team? Yeah, I think, um, I, I don't know the exact numbers myself, but I, I think it's around the 35 to 40 people involved totally. Um, we probably had somewhere around 20 people uh, that would travel to the events uh, prior to COVID. Now, this year has been quite different. Um, we were only allowed to have uh, 14 people go to the track that could actually be a part of the running the car, including the drivers. So for at least uh, the next little while, obviously we'll probably be running the cars at events with uh, reduced staff until we start to transition out of this this COVID period. So, so yeah, um, big changes for all of us. So you've got your 20 people or so on track, whether it's 14 now or, or, or 20 normally. Uh, I imagine that the the communications is is a big part of of your kind of critical infrastructure. Uh, tell us a little bit more about that. What what do you need uh, uh, to work uh, for you to succeed there? What what is the kind of critical communications uh, challenges you have to work with in a supercars race? Yeah, so most of the communications um, that we mainly have to deal with are during. Um, on track activity, so when the cars are actually out on the tr on the circuit, um, probably the first uh, challenge we have to deal with is actually talking to and from the car. Um, now the car is a is a hot and noisy environment with a lot of vibration, so there's a there's a challenge there in terms of having something that's reliable um, where you can talk to the driver at any time and know that. Um, he can hear what you say and vice versa, he can talk back. Um, so that's the first challenge. Um, the second challenge is then um, communication between sort of managers and engineers and, and crew mechanics um, sort of for carrying out pit stops and, and um, changes on the car um, and just running the cars um, during practice and qualifying sessions as well as, as the race. So you've sort of got two, um, I guess, areas there where you need to manage. Um, and that's where I guess uh, the Rydell system sort of comes in and helps us um, facilitate what we need to do there. Absolutely. So I guess the thing that stands out to me about your environment, which I think is common to, to quite a lot of environments we're working in, is, is that all of this is really time critical, right? When, when that car comes in for a pit stop, it has to happen now. And there are no second chances, right? It, it, this all has to work first time. There, there's no do-overs. Yeah, that's absolutely correct. Um, you know, in some instances, particularly in races, um, you can be having to make decisions in, in under 60 seconds and sometimes in even half that. So, you know, a lot of the time someone has to be making decisions on whether you're making pit stops and, and even what you're going to do in those pit stops. Um, and then you have to relay that information to your mechanics um, and other crew members, you know, to make sure that they um, carry out whatever tasks need to be done. So. That's, you're absolutely correct there. Um, there's time critical decisions that have to be made and information that has to be relayed to other people to carry that out, um, both to and to and from the driver, um, as well as um, with your crew members who are in pit lane. Um, so that provides a real challenge. Um, and a lot of the time, you may not have time to repeat yourself. So you need clear communication that can get across to your driver and to your crew members um, to make sure that you know you make pit stops or or um, changes to the car if it's during practice sessions and whatnot that are um, timely and and to achieve what you need to achieve. So absolutely, it's 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 time critical. Um, it's a very um, I guess you'd say uh, it's a it's a tricky environment. Um, it's high pressure, obviously you have a lot of high stakes, so um, making fast decisions and relaying that information, yeah, is absolutely critical. 
Okay, so you spoke a little bit about using some of the Riedel products. Um, tell us a little bit more about that. Obviously, you're working with with uh, a system provided by us uh, every race. What does that system involve, uh, and why why is that an important part of your uh, on track kind of infrastructure? Yes, yeah, so um, we've been using Rydell for the last uh, during the last couple of seasons here. Um, and probably the the biggest um, influence it has is using the Bolero equipment. Um, you know, I think being able to have mobile communication um, within your engineers and your and your crew, um, like they're sitting next to you, is is really paramount. And this year became became even more so, given we had reduced staff. Um, so, you know. Many of our staff at the track were now doing multiple jobs um, and having to be mobile within the garage or within pit lane um, is absolutely necessary. And also just to be flexible in terms of um, how you manage your staff and, and having the flexibility to make sure that you can communicate to who you need to and when um, is a big part of it as well. Um, so yeah, I think the Bolero has been great for us, um, you know, in terms of just having people um, move around the garage and pit lane um, and still be able to communicate. Um, that's been really helpful to us, you know. For example, um, now this didn't happen last year, but as an example, um, if, if you're lining up the race cars uh, on the grid before the start of the race and, and maybe it's, uh, it's just starting to rain, um, obviously you need to have people back in the garage deciding whether rain is going to be uh, staying in for, around for a while. Um, you need people making decisions on whether you're going to put on wet tyres or not. Um, and if you are, you then need to communicate that to your mechanics to make the change. And, and these things can be happening minutes before the start of the race. Um, so things like that are where the Bolero really become helpful um, because you can have these discussions between the right people and make, make your decisions and then relay the information that needs to be relayed. Um, and it's, it's examples like that when critical decisions really become a big part of of your performance absolutely and there's no room for error so um, any miscommunications can really complicate um, the process so brad you've talked about using the bolero system with your team in the garage and obviously you've got uh, two-way radio systems as well as a big part especially of the car to pit communications tell us a little bit about making the jump there to Bolero in the garage and how you go about picking the right tool for the job. Yeah, no, that's an interesting point. Um, you know, as I, as I said, I think um, as the team grows or as you have more and more users at the track that you need to communicate with, um, it becomes more complex um, in terms of communicating with different users and, and groups of users, um, which um, sometimes two-way radios um, become a bit of a challenge with. So um, I think um, what we've found is um, moving to sort of the technologies that Rydell have enables us to communicate with um, these different users uh, in, in an easy way. Um, and particularly this year, you know, we saw we had to really be adaptable and um with what staff we had at the track and, and um, you know, staff doing multiple jobs this year. Um, so being flexible with our communications in terms of um, who, we, who we're who we communicating with and, and when is, is really important. Um, so I think, um, you know, as these wireless technologies um, develop, um, and it sort of enables us to um, use it uh, in a way that improves the way we operate as a team. Absolutely, and and I guess the other side of the coin, which we've 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 talked about a little bit already, is is really just being able to to engage with the fans. And so, of course, as anybody who's watched supercars on on TV knows that that uh, driver communication is is a critical part of 
of the broadcast and of, of, of people engaging with the racing uh, from, from the comfort of their living room, um, that's a really important part of this evolution too, right? Trying to bring all your tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of supercast fans around Australia and further afield a little bit closer to the action so they can feel like they're, they're with you in the garage or they're with the driver in the car. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think this year was was actually quite interesting, uh, particularly during the the lockdown phase during COVID, where you know not only our sport but other sports were forced to to sort of go into on, online platforms, and and for us it was the gaming platform, you know, and the technology that they have in those um, I think was really interesting. Um, in terms of how it enabled our fans to engage with the drivers live as the as the you know playing the games, um, which I think is a interesting take on on involving fans. Which you know hopefully in the future um, it's maybe paved the way to show us how um, we can we can maybe implement that into how we operate at the track normally. Um, so it's. It was actually an interesting year, and, and I think um, we'll see some of those online technologies perhaps um, being used in the future to to sort of help engage the fans with, with the sport and the drivers. Absolutely. Well, hey, Brad, thanks so much for your time today. Thanks for, 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 for joining me to have a little chat about all things motorsport and communications, and uh, I hope you're uh, enjoying a little bit of downtime there before you guys have to get back in the shop and, and turn it all around for, for the next season. And certainly uh, we look forward to uh, working with you as you guys uh, move on to, to 2021. Yeah, thanks, Chris. I really appreciate uh, coming on here today and just give a bit of insight on how we sort of uh, operate, with, uh, particularly with the Rydell system uh, in our team. So, uh, yeah, we'll uh, have a bit of downtime before we start preparing to try and do it all again next year. Thanks, Brad. Thanks, Chris.